Yeah, as I was saying, uh, Rodney and Angie uh, won't be with us tonight. They're both involved in uh, uh, some state calls for some states that are really in uh, need of some help. So uh, uh, they, they told me they wouldn't be with us tonight. So we'll uh, move on here. Uh, I'm really excited about tonight because uh, <clears throat> we're going to introduce uh, – something to you, uh, uh, the, the thing that we've been working toward, and uh, hopefully uh, you will all have maybe some input on that too. I think, uh, yeah, George just joined us, all right. All right, but uh, let's go over the agenda real quick here. Um, first thing I want to talk about is our uh, mission statement and uh, a change that I've made in the handling of this self-governance concept. Uh, I'll get into that more when, when we uh, get to that point. Uh, but, um, and we're going to introduce uh, the uh, concept of aspirational goals. So uh, after that, then we're going to talk about the, what we're calling the region status report. And, uh, this is the this is the tool that uh, we've been wanting to develop in this uh, in this call in this region captain call, and uh, 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 we've we've got together I think what we can refer to as the shell, uh, and <clears throat> but I, I need your input, Mindy and Gary. Uh, I need your input on on some of the things that that will be on the report. So. Uh, uh, that'll be an important part of what we're talking about tonight. Then we'll uh, we'll uh, touch base on the recruitment program, the DC recruitment program, and kind of an update on the uh, DCRT report. Uh, we're really coming along very well, and I think you're gonna, um, if you haven't been on it lately, you'll you'll uh, see what I'm talking about. Then I wanted to uh, discuss with you. Uh, our super volunteers, I should have, uh, I've got just volunteers here. They're what I refer to as our super volunteers and how, uh, how we're going to handle them. Um, so I'll explain that to you when we get to that part. Uh, I don't have it on the agenda here, but I, I do want to uh, hear from Mindy and Gary and, and Rachel how they're coming uh, with regard to training and uh, how uh, how the region captains, the two of you, how you're doing with uh, taking on more of the uh, the training uh, responsibility and how that's coming along. So I want to hear about that tonight. And then the last thing I want to talk about is story time. And uh, I'll explain that and how I think I want to handle to begin with, at least, how I want to handle uh, story time and what that's all about. All right. Okay, let's go up here to the uh, vision statement and uh, mission statement. And let me see if I can pull up the right thing here. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Okay. As you know, uh, when we <clears throat> start our state calls, or as well as other calls, we go over our uh, vision statement and mission statement. I'm, and I'm going to change this. I'm not changing the vision statement. That that's going to remain the same. But uh, it's how we're going to handle self-governance. Okay, uh, we're going to introduce what we call aspirational goals. And I thought this <laughs> I thought this cartoon was, was pretty good. I think the cat has uh, high aspirations, but I don't believe the cat will ever reach them. Um, and that, that's what an aspirational goal is. It's something that we strive for and that we may we may never actually uh, achieve. And uh, I have found out in my research that uh, I've been trying and researching and researching 
trying to find a way to measure self-governance and I simply could not find anything. I couldn't find a model. I couldn't find anything that gave me uh, any uh, um, anything that I could work with as far as measuring our involvement in self-governance. So what I'm what I've decided to do is I'm going to pull self-governance out of our mission goals, and I'm going to then include self-governance, which it already is, in the aspirational goals. And these aspirational goals are, in fact, the Convention of States aspirational goals. And you'll find these in the front of every training manual. Um, one of the very first sections would be the aspirational goals of the organization. And that's uh, to organize and restore representative government. Uh, restore a culture of self-governance, which we, that's what we're trying to get to, and uh, inspire uh, a political and spiritual awakening based on the founding of our country. So we will address these as aspirational goals, which leads then our mission goals will be three, and that'll be, of course, our recruitment goal, then our legislative uh, meeting and legislator presenting the 34 Ready program, and then our grassroots growth to 30,000. So anybody have any comments or questions on that? No? Okay, okay. Let's then, let's get into this um, status report. And let me make sure I can get to the, okay. Here is the shell. Um, I came up with a spreadsheet and Rachel came up with one. And of course, uh, uh, we had to go with Rachel's or she would have gotten mad if we didn't do it her way. So, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is this is the shell that I think we're going to use, and uh, basically, uh, what I what I think we're going to do is I think we're going to do this once a month, where the re each the region captains each region captain will have this status report prepared for that monthly meeting and it'll it, this will be this will be a uh, Google doc document type thing we can do that right Rachel are you there yeah oh sorry oh. there's a delay we'll do that oh uh, so we'll have one set up for each region and you as the region captain then can uh, can fill this out as the month goes along for those items that where you can do that. Um, <clears throat> the first section here under recruitment, we think that's pretty much the region captain's area. That's the region captain's responsibility. And for the districts that are still open, in her, his or her region, then you would basically list them here on the left. And uh, we're using right now, we're using the format from the DCRT report where you would list the information and the progress that you're making with regard to recruitment calls in the districts that are open in your region. From that point on down, the report, then each column would be assigned to a particular district. So then each piece of information that we're monitoring here would then apply to each of the respective districts. And this is the area where I'm asking for your input. 
uh, what I'm asking you, I, you, you saw the, the uh, document that I uh, sent out to you on Slack this afternoon. Uh, those are the areas, and, and uh, we can I can bring that up here. These are, are some of the things in each of the areas that uh, <clears throat> um, that uh, that I've listed as as possible information uh, that would be nice to know, would be good to know. Uh, I, I have not included self-governance, uh, but I did include uh, communications. Um, so, but what I'm asking the region captains right now is, what information would you like to see listed here that would tell you and would tell us which the districts that are doing their job and the districts that are not doing their job. Anybody got any comments or input? Could you scroll it down so we can see a little more? Can you see it? Yeah, thank you. Now, uh, Rachel had put self-governance down here. I would I would uh, take that out and uh, I would replace that with uh, communications. Unless you think that that's important to put in there. I, I, I'm open right now to what kind of content that we would like to have here. I can't think of anything myself, but I mean, this would be ongoing, so as we used it, we could change it, right? All right, right. Because it's just a spreadsheet, so. Right. I think, we'd, I think I'd have more of an idea once I started using it. Okay. And actually doing it. I haven't done the, done it yet. Well, believe me, um, <clears throat> I've been on a lot of uh, state director calls and where this topic has been discussed, and a lot of state directors have said, you know, I just don't know. How, how, how do I know? what's going on in my districts, uh -huh. um, you know, and, you know, we got, we've got 100 districts. Someday we could have 100 district captains in place, and a lot of, some states have many more than that. So this is, like I said, this would be a tool that would tell you as the region captain what's going on in your region and then it tells me and other leaders what's going on in your region as well as overall in all regions. I like it too because I think it can be confusing because a senator, uh, of course, can have more than one district and you could actually assign the senator on here to a person and know that it got covered and not covered multiple right. times. Right, right. I like that. Okay. Okay. Now, um, that's a that's an interesting particular one uh, as far as legislator meetings. Um, obviously, we're we're not asking for district captains to meet with their legislators every month. So, uh, you know, if they put in, uh, as a matter of fact, we're only we're only asking right now that they meet one time with their uh, legislators. Uh, between now and the end of the year and present the 34 ready program so <clears throat> that would basically be like Rachel's indicated here perhaps a date as to when the meeting took place or the date when it's scheduled or, or so in other words did you present the 34 ready kind of a yes or no type answer okay. in that regard if we are looking for our district captains to build a relationship with that legislator, it seems to me that we ought to have them report, you know, if they run into them at a meeting where they have coffee or something like that, we ought to encourage more than just presenting the 34 Ready program. Good point, good point. 
and also I agree. Sorry about the curl in my hair, but I <laughs> I had to <laughs> the training, so you guys have to deal. This is the comic relief for tonight. Um, my hair. <laughs> Anyway, but um, I think that the garage, would, that's a good point. So, you know, it, it would also be a good way to see, you know, if, if, if you as a region captain or Dale, is, if you see that, you know, month after month there are certain district captains who seem to always be filling in that column, who seem to be continuing to have some kind of communication, that would be an easy way to recognize that that person is going above and beyond. So Yeah, yeah. But you can you can also uh, understand if we continue to see blanks in this area in a particular district, then we know it's beginning to look like, at least to us, that uh, uh, that district captain is not doing what he or she is supposed to be doing, and we can address that then. So. So how would you would you like for us to just go ahead and list what we have? If, if, if you let me bring up my list again, my list is quite long here. <laughs> okay, um, of course Rachel has already uh, nixed a, a few of them here, but um, what do you you want me to just go ahead and set this up? And we'll just kind of go with it and uh, change it as needed. You want to do it that way? Yeah, I have yeah, a good idea. Trial run would be good. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, Rachel, what was your comment about uh, not to use Google Docs? Um, yeah, my thought was just that, you know, I think we have to think a little bit about the best way to, because um, the thing about Google Docs is that it, um, it it keeps, you know, when you make changes to it, the, the document is changed. I mean, I think if they just saved the, the spreadsheet to their own folders and then every month, you know, filled it in and submitted it to you, that would work. That way you could keep um, because when you have a Google document, so let's say for March, it has all the information. If they use that same Google document in April, it's going to write over all the information for March. So it might be better for them to actually make take the template, save it as a document, and then send that document to you each month so that you can then have keep track of all the different months. If that well, that, then would I be able to share that on our I put that up on the screen here and share that with them. Yeah, it would just be like a spreadsheet. It would just be an Excel spreadsheet that they shared. You'd save it then into your file, and then you could share it. Okay. All right. So. All right. That's and you know, again, the other thing too, just to let you guys know, like this is not. This doesn't mean that this is how you guys have to keep track of things. I mean, you can create your own system for tracking your district captains through the month. This is just, I think, I think you know, a way that. Dale would like these are the, these are the topics and the, the pieces of information that would be helpful for Dale to have, and we think would be helpful to for you to have. So this is kind of like a minimum. Um, if you have another system that you know as the month goes on that you want to work with, that's fine too. But you know we want something uniform, I think, between for for all the region captains, so that Dale can keep track of everything. Um, so we're certainly open. I think you know Dale said too. We're certainly open to suggestions if you think of a better way to do it, but. I actually like it, and thank you guys for quite a bit of time went into this. I appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of data to remember, and this will this will be nice to be able to keep everything just at a glance. You can see. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Um, I want to mention, uh, like a, uh, well, Rachel did put down here at the bottom under general uh, state call region calls other contacts. Um, <clears throat> you know, we, we want to encourage, as you know, we do a state call every month, okay, and then we do these uh, individual uh, 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 group calls uh, uh, throughout each week, throughout the month. But I've always thought that a region captain should conduct a region call of some type once a month where they are they get their uh, district captains together 
on uh, uh, using freeconferencecall.com or whatever whatever method you want to use, whatever system you want to use. But you have a some type of a region call once a month, and I even think that then each district captain should be doing the same thing in their district with uh, uh, perhaps maybe their volunteers or whoever uh, whoever the volunteers are in, in their particular district, or they can open it up to uh, everyone in their district if they wanted to. But some, in other words, there should be some means of communication going on every month uh, throughout the levels of convention estates. So uh, that's an area that uh, I, I would like to put in this uh, report so that I know who is, uh, who, is, who is doing that and who's not doing it. And like I said, I think uh, as far as frequency, <clears throat> we were thinking uh, probably once a month uh, be some type of a, maybe a call right at the, uh, perhaps maybe at the first region captain call of the month covering the prior month or something like that that we would uh, um, go over these. All right, anybody else have any comments or uh, questions or suggestions? Okay, okay. All right, I wanted to uh, go over then uh, the uh, district captain recruitment uh, effort that we have going on. And uh, I want to uh, thank all of you for, uh, especially uh, Mindy and Gary, uh, for the work that you've been doing on this. Uh, this is... Uh, we're, we're, we're in the in the stretch here we're, we're shooting to complete this by the end of June and I think that's well within uh, reach and I want to point out something here to you you can see these are and 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 these are producing results by the way uh, producing good results we're getting uh, uh, more and more uh, district captain applicants uh, and we're uncovering uh, interested people that uh, uh, could very well apply to be volunteers or some other um, position. Uh, I'll just point one out here that was listed as an interesting per interested person, um, one that I uncovered in uh, District 17, um, and that person has, in fact, uh, applying to be a district captain so uh, and that's what and that's what we try to do with these interested people is we try to get them to look at the different volunteer opportunities that we have and uh, get them to apply for something so I tried I tried calling him tonight uh, earlier today and uh, I didn't make contact with him but I'll you didn't okay yeah. so uh, <clears throat> And, uh, and I can see where we're generating people that are interested in becoming district captains. Uh, so that's keeping George busy uh, uh, trying to contact these individuals. But I wanted to point out a little number here, and this is the calls remaining to be made, 232. If you remember when we started this process, well, you can see the calls that have been made. We had uh, eight, over 800 calls remaining to be made, and we're down now to 232. So uh, we're going we're gonna to end this. We're going to wind this up in uh, uh, the end of this month, and uh, and, I, and I think it's going it, to it will have produced a lot of uh, good candidates for us. I hope. Okay. Anybody have any questions or comments on this? Well, you guys aren't too talkative tonight. <laughs> okay. Let's go back now to the uh, 
uh, to the uh, uh, agenda. And the next item that I wanted to talk about, and I've uh, lost my agenda here. There it is. Uh, and that's volunteers. <clears throat> what we're going to do with our volunteers, I call them our super volunteers. These are the volunteers that have applied to be a volunteer. Uh, that's, that's different than people signing the petition and checking the box that they want to volunteer. These are people that have actually applied to be a volunteer, and that is a, that is a position on the uh, website um, uh, uh, to be a volunteer. And I, call, I refer to them as super volunteers. And let me see if I can get my – here on the leaders uh, list, um, I, I put them together here on the list under super volunteers. And these are the ones that we currently have in this group. And I've indicated here the district number that they live in, the region, name, email, uh, telephone number, and some skill that they have stressed either in their uh, application or through uh, my conversation with them. I contact them just like any other applicant and uh, actually go through a somewhat of a phone interview with them. Um, it's not unusual. We, we can get... Uh, two, three applicants a week um, for this position. But, of course, uh, like like <laughs> district captains, uh, many of them you try to contact them and they never respond. So, um, but we, we, get, uh, we get one every so often. Um, this gentleman here, Lowell Foster, just added him today. So what I want to do and what I'm – telling these people is we're putting them in what we call a super volunteer pool and these will be these will be people that will be available to any leader in the state that needs some help in doing whatever they're trying to do um, so that leader be it a district captain, region captain, whoever it might be, then uh, if they need help, then they can go to this list and uh, and contact. And, and I would, I obviously would uh, uh, recommend that they get someone close to where they're located. And if they happen to have a volunteer here that's in their district, definitely contact that person. But uh, so the leader will contact the volunteer by email or phone, determine if they're available, explain what they want to have done, and if they can are willing to do that. So, so uh, this will be basically a pool of help that will be available to leaders in the state. Anybody have any uh, questions or comments on that? Okay. All right. Well, let's let's talk about. I like I said, I didn't uh, put this on the uh, agenda for tonight, but I want to hear how is the training, Gary and Mindy? How's that coming along with um, you uh, uh, taking over the training? Slow. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I. Uh, tuned in on uh, Rachel's training for session one with uh, Bill her guy or no Papiak Bill Papiak, Papiak. and uh, that went went well and uh, I'm gonna I was gonna tune in tonight for session two but the time was changed and I couldn't make it so uh, yeah I mean I think 
I think I certainly learned from that experience. And as I get through each of the modules, I think, yeah, I'll be in the, a pretty good position to uh, to start taking that on for people in my region. Okay. How you doing, Mindy? I'm doing good. I sat with one module, through one module so far with Mr. Holcomb, and it's nice just to sit back and observe. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a process. It'll take a while to get through, and then I'll be doing it on my own. It's, it's going to be easy because the modules are already clearly delineated and all that material that you need is already there. So, you know, I'm looking forward to getting to continuing it and getting started on training myself. Okay. Are you, uh, Gary or Mindy, are, are you noticing, have you come across anything that you might want to do differently than what uh, the way Rachel does it? or? To be honest, no. Because um, I liked my training. It was very clear what was expected and Mm -hmm. And I did that, and then the calls went smooth because it was done, and um, no. Okay. okay. I could know a little bit more about it like Rachel does, <laughs> you know, because she's been doing it a long time. Yeah. yeah. And she is a lawyer and all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can't hold that against her in any way. <laughs> I know. On most days, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I have, I have a, some feedback on that, actually. Um, uh, sorry, I know you want cameras. Sorry, my curler's out. Okay. So, um, yeah, so it's been, so far we've had one, again, I've done module one with both Gary and Mindy, and then I spoke with them afterwards about it. Um, and uh, the situation that happened with Gary today is, um, you know, Gary actually, one of Mindy's people and two of Gary's people are extremely motivated and moving through really quickly. And as you got, as you know, Dale, when we get somebody that's really speeding through, we don't want to stop them or slow them down because it's so rare and it's so exciting. So um, Joe Christian, who is fantastic, who's one of um, Gary's district captains, had to change the time of his module today and he was out of town and it was already kind of inconvenient. So instead of, you know, going back and forth with Gary, since Gary does have um, another new person that's coming in, I believe, too, that's about to start training. Um, I figured that we would, you know, um, I would let him go along with module two. And what I ended up doing, I don't know if Gary got my Slack message, is I recorded the session. Um, I asked Joe if he was okay with that. He said it was fine. And um, we basically recorded the session, So, and then I sent the copy of the recording to Gary, so Gary will at least be able to see, because, and Mindy can speak to this, you know, each session is different. I mean, Mindy and I had a kind of a weird situation with Dallas the other night, where he kind of stopped at the idea of, like, talking about the Constitution, and he kind of presented the way that he likes to tell people about Convention of States. And I understood the point that he was trying to be simple, but he was also misstating things. Like he was saying, like, we're not going to be amending the Constitution. And I was trying to explain to him in a nice way, you know, <laughs> that's exactly what we're doing. And he was saying, yeah. his, response, you know, his response was like, well, I don't want them to be confused. I, I don't want to talk about, you know, legalese and stuff like that. And I said, you know, so it was, it was kind of an on-the-spot moment. And Mindy and I spoke about it afterwards, the fact that it was a delicate situation because we want to encourage him and I think it worked out okay but I was even taken aback you know I've been doing this for months and months and months and this was the first time that I had that come to me so there's definitely things that come up you can't anticipate everything um, but overall the, the, the trainings have gone very well and um, we have a bunch of new people who seem to be really I don't know what if anything has changed in these interviews or whatever but I there's like five or six people that have come in recently that seem to be speeding through training so I'm hoping that continues Good, good. Um, I never thought about this, Rachel, but as as a rule, you don't you don't record these um, training sessions. Cordon, I I kind of I think it's a little awkward, you know, because it's especially in the first module where I'm I'm asking again, it's, it's so much, you know, they're uncom they don't really know, you know, maybe they're self conscious the first time that they're going to be put on the spot and asked to explain convention of states and you know I, I just I've always kind of felt like it's um, I don't know I, I feel like maybe it puts them a little bit on the spot so 
Um, it maybe might make some people uncomfortable to have it recorded. Um, the reason that I felt comfortable asking um, Joe was because we had already spoken about the fact that Gary was going to be sitting in on training and he had agreed. I always ask them first if it's okay. And he agreed to it and I told him that, you know, the purpose of the recording was only to share it with Gary. Um, I think that if we're going to be using these recordings for general purposes, we have to be explicit and we have to get permission. And I think it's, it, I think it might be, an, you know, I'm always on the side of, of being wary about this stuff. You know, it's basically sharing people's images and, and they're, you know, with people they don't know. I don't know how people would feel about that. I mean, we could talk yeah. about it if you want to do, but my inclination is that I feel like it's it's a little bit of much of an ask in general. So, no, I haven't been recording them. All right, all right, all right. Okay, anybody else got any, uh, any comments or questions on that? Okay. Well, the last thing on the agenda that I had was uh, what I call story time. Uh, this is something that we've talked about uh, in some previous calls. I don't know if all of you uh, have been uh, uh, exposed to those conversations, but uh, we, we've, we've talked about, uh, um, and, and the way I'm going to do this, the way I'm going to handle it is, uh, is in the state call. We've talked about uh, ways to get people, leaders, to uh, to tell their story, to tell, talk about who they are, how they came to Convention of States, what they're trying to achieve. In other words, tell their story. And uh, uh, we ultimately want to use these video clips for our um, – um, um, web page, our, our state page on the uh, uh, Convention, of state, Convention of States website. So, uh, in a way, in, a, in an effort to encourage people to talk about and tell their story on camera, uh, we're going to, I think, do this as part of the uh, state call, and we'll have a segment called Story Time. And we'll set this up ahead of time with, um, oh, I don't know, two or three individuals to uh, who would be willing to come on camera and uh, and tell their story. And I'll kind of interview them in a in a way to kind of get them going. And then uh, then we'll use that uh, video clip uh, uh, then for content on our uh, website. So uh, we'll start it off out here as part of the state call, and it's been suggested that perhaps we even do a separate call totally dedicated to people telling their stories, and we just we may we may do that. But I want to start out with just a segment in the uh, state call. Anybody have any questions or comments on that? All right. Well, um, I plan on having the next region uh, captain call uh, one week from tonight on the 19th. Then we're going to be uh, skipping a week because of the state call coming up. But I hope um, at our next region captain call that we'll have the final uh, shell, the final uh, look at, at what the uh, – Region Captain status reports are going to look like at least what we're going to start out with. So we'll wrap hey, it up here. Huh? Dale, this is George. I got a quick question. Yeah. Um, about calling spreadsheet, are you going to keep that up even though we're like done with the surge part of it? Uh -huh. You know, that way that as new people come in, they can still update the, the sheet as far as people or I. You're going to start like with a new one, maybe, or I, I don't know. I just I just thought of that. I was wondering. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll we'll probably come up with a new one because um, I'm thinking uh, I want to I want to analyze this, George. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, how many people do you think hit the district dashboard? Uh, for the state in a given week? Uh, well, we get 30 to 50 in the follow-up tool a day. 
Uh, a lot of times they're they're centered around Fort Wayne or Indianapolis, you know. Yeah. Not right there, but you know, in that probably within a twenty mile radius of those and stuff is is a majority of it. We've been getting a lot of them in the uh, northwest lately. <coughs> But uh, yeah, just just for any given district, it's it's really just kind of hit or miss in the outlying areas. Well, get a, get a few a month maybe. <laughs> what what I want to what I want to do is I want to I want to get some sort of estimate as to how many how many people would we be talking about? Now we're now of course this would be people coming into districts without a district captain or without a region captain. And how many would how many of those uh could could maybe one or two people uh make the calls necessary uh for new people coming in to the district dashboard yeah I, I would think so on on a normal daily basis yeah not considering right. a big, you know big influx because national just some advertising or something right um, so you, uh, so to answer, to answer your question, uh, uh, I haven't quite figured that out yet, but uh, that is something that we we need to uh, analyze and come up with a plan on. All right. Okay. Anybody, have, any, anybody have anything else? All right, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good evening. And. Uh, be talking to you on the uh, 19th, if not before. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. That's good. Thanks, Dale. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.